This is 3D Visualizer, um, a software a GUI application to look at 3D volumetric data, like this data set right here in this box, which I'm going to not tell you what it is, you're going to see in just a moment. And when you start out the program, which is meant for really interactive exploration, you don't know what's in there when you start, uh, you have to create so-called visualization elements uh, by reaching into the data set and extracting things like what I'm going to show you right now. Uh, I made a slicing tool which allows me to just again reach into the data, press a button, and then the program is going to extract a cross-section through the data uh, from the point of my hand. And as I move the data set around or move my hand around, I can change, oops, it's upside down, I can change um, the, the things that I'm seeing. And, and at this point, I'm not giving away any secrets when I'm telling you that this is a CAT scan of somebody's abdomen. Uh, the reason, well, what they're looking for in there, I'm going to show you in just a sec. So I'm going to move this, this slice around until I find the thing I'm looking for, right about here. Uh, and so now, if I want to, if I let go of the button, the slice stays, and now I can make another slice by, you know, pressing the button one more time, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, the reason is that slices are fantastic to, to find very quickly the things you're looking for, but they're really bad at showing you the 3D shape of what those things are. Now, you can make multiple slices and uh, kind of create a mental model, but it's not really ideal. You have a 3D visualization package, so you want to really see things in 3D, so you don't have to imagine what they look like. Uh, and for that, I'm creating the companion tool uh, to, the, to the slice, which is a an ISO surface, which will connect all the points having the same data value, in this case uh, density value, than the one I'm touching. So I'm going to really zoom in to this uh, slice here, and then touch this point and press the button, and so now the system will extract an ISO surface in real time from the point where I'm touching, and so that I can use to just move my hand around until I get exactly the surface that I want, like this one. And so now we zoom out. Uh, and I show you the object that, is that I just extracted, and you can see what it is. Uh, this is an abdominal aortal stent, which is a, a metal mesh. You can see here the individual metal wires. It's like a, like a chicken wire mesh, only really tiny. Um, that was inserted into this patient's abdominal aorta uh, to, to uh, prevent the blood from forming a, uh, an aneurysm, a balloon, that then can potentially pop and well, it will probably kill the patient at the point. So this mesh uh, is supposed to protect that or to prevent that. So I'm going to turn off the slice at this point because we don't need it anymore. And because now we only have uh, the stent, which shows up very nicely in a CAT scan because it's made of metal, um, I also want to show you for context the actual blood vessel. So I'm going to reach in here uh, and again press the uh, press the button on the, on, the, on the hydro handle and just move it until I get what I'm looking for. That's pretty decent, I think. Here we go. Great, great, well done. Uh, so here we have now the aorta, uh, which you know comes down here, uh, which is tremendously big. Um, at that point here, it's probably about the diameter of my thumb. Um, and then it splits. And then down here, it turns into the femoral arteries that go down the legs. Here, of course, we have the hip joint. Uh, on either side, uh, you can see the spine here. You can see the ribs coming down the rib cage. You can see a couple of smaller arteries branching off, uh, branching off the main one. Uh, and so this is a, uh, a nice way of, of showing you where that is. Now, the reason why the bones showed up, uh, the reason why the, the blood vessels have the same density on the CAT scanner as the bones, normally they wouldn't, is that the patient before the CAT scan was taken was injected with a contrast agent. Uh, and so that's why the, uh, why the blood vessels show up so prominently. What that actually means is what we're seeing here are not the blood vessels themselves, but it's the volume of blood running through the blood vessels, um, because that's where the contrast agent is. So when it looks like here that the stent is on the outside of the aorta, that's actually not right. Um, the stent is on the inside of the aorta, but the blood flow is then, of course, on the inside of the stent. That's the purpose of it. Uh, and so that's why it looks a little bit funny right now. But now with this program, once you have the surface extracted, you can, you can actually go spelunking down this guy's um, bloodstream here. The, the one of the buttons on the left hydra handle is really acting up today, I don't know why. So I can zoom in quite a lot, and I can put us uh, into um, delete the tool from, oops, that I did not want to press that button. Uh, hang on. Uh, delete, okay. Get rid of the tool and go back. Get rid of the tool and go, <laughs> and go back in. So now we are in one of the arteries, and I can now use a, a navigation tool, a fly, to, fly tool, which works really well for this. 
uh, to just take us through uh, take us through the aorta like a little submarine here. I'm expecting Raquel Welch to show up around the corner any moment now. Um, and this gives you a great idea what it actually looks like inside someone's aorta. Uh, well, one of, sorry, that's not the aorta here, inside someone's artery. And uh, this is essentially the way how, how virtual endoscopy is done. You take a CAT scan and then instead of sending a camera up somebody's <coughs> uh, artery, you, uh, you do it virtually from the CAT scan. So here it looks like I'm now inside the stented area. Um, what you have here is hopefully not arterial plaque. What you have here is just artifacts from this part of the model being surrounded by metal. And CAT scanners don't react to that very kindly. And yes, guess what? We are right inside the stent. So that's what happens. Um, let's see. We can look at some other parts uh, of the anatomy here. Um, I can zoom in up in this region. And this is, of course, the rib cage. So this is somewhere where the lungs should be. And I should mention one other thing. Um, I want to measure the diameter of this. Uh, just because I mentioned how big the aorta is, and it's just so it was surprising to me the first time I saw it. So here I want a clipping plane, so I can just cut away a part of the data I don't want, so I can get a nice juicy cross section right there. And so now I can take a measurement while I'm holding that uh, while I'm holding that cross section open. Let's see, I can go in here and just measure that. I put a measurement marker right there, put another one right here, and you see that the diameter here is 27 and a half millimeters, give or take. Uh, so it's a little bit more than an inch, as I said, it's a bit thicker than my thumb. Uh, it's pretty, quite big. Um, geez, uh, this, what the? This button is randomly collecting button presses even though I'm not pressing anything, which is of course really annoying. Jeez, this thing sucks. Anyway, um, uh, getting up there in age, it's not really, I'm going to probably clean it in some way. Um, what was I going to say? All right, so I can make a cutting plane like this, where I have to keep the button pressed, which if the hydro doesn't cooperate, is not so easy. Or actually, I can make a more permanent thing. I can, what I do is, I create a virtual hand, so to speak. I make a new input device, which is like a virtual handle, uh, and then I can use a button on a real input device, and here I'm going to use which one? Let's say this one. Uh, and I can just uh, control this virtual input device uh, as if it were um, a real one. So I can pick it up, move it around, uh, and this thing up here, it's a virtual button, so I can use that and move over here and make a clipping plane, confirm that, and so now I have a clipping plane that I can turn on or off and it's fixed in space. Uh, so I can drag my data through the cutting plane, so to speak, um, or I can just, by selecting this button here, I can attach the cutting plane to the data and just leave it like that. So that comes in really handy, even if you have two hands, sometimes you just need a third hand, uh, and then doing it like this uh, is a great way a great way of achieving that. So I'm going to turn off the clipping plane now. I don't need it anymore. Actually, I'm going to leave this in the data. Uh, and then let's see what else we have here. So I'm now going to uh, go back to making isosurfaces because I want to show a little bit more what's going on here. Okay, uh, drag this up and this down. So up here, uh, we have the lungs. And so now I want to get uh, an idea where the lungs are. So I'm going to just reach into the general vicinity of where I expect the lungs to be. Press the button and voila, there we go. And so the nice thing really about this interactive isosurface extraction is I can get the isosurface that I want very, very easily. Here we have a nice one. So what you see here is the pulmonary artery going right in here, uh, and then of course branching into all these tiny little blood vessels um, that connect to the alveoli, which is where the gas exchange to the atmosphere takes place. Uh, and uh, if you do it on the other side, then let's see. Here we go. There's the lung. And then I'm going to move it around a little to get... Here we have only an individual blood vessel, don't want that. This here, oops, did not need to do that. This one here, pretty nice. Cool. Um, that I made one extra surface there that I don't want. This one here. So I'm just going to delete that and turn this back on. Okay, great. So you can see the lungs from, from below. And actually, I should mention, you see that there's this big dent uh, in, the, in this lung over here. Uh, I, I don't know what that is. I'm a doctor, not a physician. Somebody will have to tell me. Looks kind of interesting, but I have no clue. Uh, and then the last thing I want to do is um, I want to try to see if I can get the actual uh, pulmonary artery. So I'm going to move in here, press the button, and now get a good one. You see a lot of noise there. This is great. Uh, and actually, I got a lot more stuff than I bargained for, but that's okay for now. Uh, you see there's the pulmonary artery, and actually it branches here and goes to the rest of the upper body. And so what you see here now is the heart. Right there it is. Actually, it's part of it. The heart was cut in half by the by the CAT scan domain. Uh, I wish they had scanned just a few inches more, but doesn't matter. 
The reason why the heart is so noisy looking uh, is because it was beating at the time the CAT scan was taken. So it didn't really resolve very nicely. And here we also now see um, the, uh, a little bit more of the anatomy. Uh, here are the kidneys. Uh, and I have no idea why there's a big hole in the kidney here. Um, or I think there's one over here as well. Uh, again, I'm not that kind of doctor. Somebody will have to tell me. Uh, this stuff that you're seeing here, uh, that kind of fractal looking stuff, that is a, a typical side effect of using isosurfaces on, on CAT scan data. Um, isosurfaces are a differential operator. They are a high pass filter, so to speak. And so if the data is noisy, the data are noisy, then getting an isosurface from a noisy part of the data will just give you a space filling curve like this one. Um, they do work really well, but again, there is this caveat. So what you can do is use an alternative method that is not differential, but integral, which is a low pass filter. And I'm going to do that. At first, I'm going to remove or actually not remove, but just to turn off all the isosurfaces. Okay, at this point it should be empty, great. Uh, and then I'm going to make a this is not make a volume renderer. Okay, let's see. Um, assign that to a tool, press the button, delete it right away. Uh, and here we now have a volume rendering of this uh, of this patient. Volume rendering is sort of like volumetric fog. I'm going to change the color here, make it a little bit less boring. Uh, well, okay, that's not as boring, but not necessarily pretty. Doesn't matter. Um, it shows the actual density values associated with each point in the model uh, as a yes, as a transparent fog. So you can see the soft tissue here, and the entire body of this patient. Uh, you can still see at a different color uh, the stent right there in the middle. I can put my head in there like, like this. Um, and the nice thing about volume rendering is, again, it is reacts much more favorably to noise uh, because it's uh, integrated. It's an integral over, uh, over redirection. Uh, and also it shows us a lot more things at the same time because it can interactively change the color mapping uh, of data values to, uh, to colors. Uh, this is this color palette editor where I can, for example, take the green stuff there and make it, I don't know, pick it, make it yellow. Uh, but it's changing here these red, green, blue sliders, which is maybe not the most intuitive way of selecting colors, but oh well. Uh, or more importantly, uh, I can change the opacity of this data value, which is here mapped up and down, so I'm drawing a drag on this slider, and I can make it very opaque, in which case I see really the, the soft tissue, or I can make it completely disappear, or well, almost, in which case I'm now seeing the skeleton behind the soft tissue, but still I have this faint aura uh, of the soft tissue just to give me context where things are uh, in this patient. I can drag the control point to the left and to the right to get the, color, the same color assigned to different parts of the data. Uh, this here is pretty good, so you can see there are the kidneys, uh, here's the heart. The lungs don't show up because they're full of air. Um, and uh, well, the bones, of course, show up really nicely. If you look here, you can see even the hard part of the bone right there, the bone marrow in the middle, which has a lower x-ray density. You can see the same thing here for the ribs. You can see they almost look like they are split in half because they are very thin up there and there. Uh, and then here, of course, you have, uh, you have the spine also quite nicely resolved. Now this is where uh, a cutting plane comes in really handy when you work with volume rendering. Having a cutting plane in there is something that is really useful to cut away all the stuff that you don't want to see. Even though it's transparent, you still might not want to see it. You can very nicely see here the, uh, the mesh nature uh, of that stand. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. Uh, move it away. Actually, I'm going to just delete that thing. Uh, destroy it. Here we go. Uh, and that's it for 3D Visualizer. So it's a program to interactively explore 3D data. Works great for medical data like this. Uh, works, I would say, even better for numerical simulation data that you get in the physical sciences. Uh, wind tunnels experiments, uh, flow experiments, uh, mental convection, tectonics, that kind of stuff. Okay.